case you haven't seen the other two videos, part one and part two, uh, this is the build of a forge press using a $100 or $80 UK pound uh, air assisted jack, which does work uh, and I've used one before on another machine which is similar. So up to now we've got the main frame built, we've got the carriage for the bottom jaw. Since the last video I've trued up these, these We need to tighten that up and I've been cutting all the parts so I've got all the parts for the base plate for the jack uh, the bottom jaw the top jaw and also I've been working on how we're going to attach the tool in as well so this is all the the parts that we need these are for the bottom jaw and what I've done with these I'm going with well, I've more or less pinched the idea of uh, coal iron works, how they attach their tooling. So they have a slot and then they just have a, a screw in the side which locks the tool in place. So all these plates have got this slot in. Uh, slot took a little bit of work but all I did was chain drilled it, uh, cut and disc down the sides and then just filed it out. So it took sort of an hour, an hour and a half to do what one, two, three, four pieces. This is the top jaw, I've doubled this up um, and I've also cut these, these will go onto the sides just as additional support onto the frame. Uh, these are the feet for the thing to stand, these will get holes drilled in them because it's going to get bolted down, that's why they're not actually that big but because it gets bolted down um, and all these pieces, I mean these were the pieces that I cut off the top corner of of the main frame so I'm just reusing them re recycling um, but they work perfect and um, so, yeah so that was the actual plate this will get cut into smaller sections and attached to the bottom of each of the dies so we'll start make a start and we'll start tacking some of these in place so that's the uh, the bottom jaw all tacked up. I've checked everything's nice and square this way, same across this way. Um, you know, if it's going to be out of square, you want to know now because you can always knock one of the tacks off. But so that's all nice and square. Um, I've got this separate plate here but because the tooling is going to slide into the jaw. So I've got a double thickness, so we end up with like 30 millimeters in there that will slide in and then I'm going to have another plate up against that and these are all going to get welded in right along here which is going to give us loads of strength we've got 45 millimeter thickness across there um, because this we are relying on all these welds for the strength of this which I know it will be fine so that's them um, welded up and then I've just dressed the sides and the front. So top plate welded, the, the bottom jaw is all welded up. So now I've sat the jack in place and this plate and I'll get this welded in place. Just make sure that the jack is centered that way. But I've kept it further that in, that way in because I mean, this is eight inches, but most of the tools I'm using are six inches. So I've put it in the center of that, just there's less strain the further in you go. Um, and then I will also, I'll need to drill the feet, get them welded on. Uh, we're not too far away then. So that's the feet welded on, the plates welded on. So all the welding is now done. I've added the springs, which were the original springs that came with the jack. So I've, I've attached them to this sliding carriage. So it pulls down, I fix the fixings for the jack to hold it to the plate. Also drilled and tapped these. I will put a bolt with a, with a knob on it, but I need to find something metal rather than a plastic one. And these will hold the two, each of the dies in place when they slot in. So one in the top, one in the bottom. And I think that is it. I think what we'll do, what I'll do now I'm just going to, get, I'm going to give it a coat of paint and let it dry overnight and then tomorrow I can work on a mechanism
for the control for releasing and the the, the jack um, and, and applying the air. So yeah, that'll do for now. So that's it all back together again. Um, this morning I have welded up a a stand for it. Um, so lower than my other bench it was on just to give me a nice working height when I'm forging. Uh, other things I've added, I had forgot to add the, the grease nipples, so I've added one of them each side of this carriage. I may need to add one in the centre, but we'll see how we go. If I'm getting an even spread of grease, then, then it'll be fine. So next thing is to work out the, the mechanism for a foot pedal. So I've got to be able to close the valve on the jack and operate the the trigger so that's this afternoon's job um, need to get the thinking head on and of course I forgot um, I did the graphics on everything looks better with graphics and I had to give it a name AAFP Mark II Air Assisted Forge Press Mark II from Narsdale Forge so I'm going with a bit of design as you go. Um, what I've done, I've got a bracket off the base plate with the tube and then I've got a rod going through uh, with another piece of tube welded to it which is I've squashed sort of to an oval so it fits over the little connector. Um, so now it's uh, operates like that so I'll need to do some sort of lever that is going to connect down to the pedal um, and I'm thinking possibly something like a, a sewing machine treadle so I've got a full width pedal um, but uh, I'll see so for the pedal <coughs> or treadle um, welded a bolt, bolt each side which will go through the legs of the stand um, weld it to a piece of angle. A piece of angle will just get bolted to the piece of aluminium plate. This is a bit of 8mm aluminium. So then that, that will pivot. Um, and I've offset it because what I want is more movement at the back when it's lifting, just so I get plenty of travel if I need it. Um, and I can adjust that uh, with the length of the, the arm at the top, the length of the pivot at the top. So it will operate something like that. When, when I press down on the back, I'll, it will press the, the air switch and re, uh, it will lock the, the, the hydraulics on the jack, uh, which, which is gonna make it operate. Right, I've scrapped the idea of the pedal for the minute because what I was thinking didn't really work that well. So I'm not actually gonna show you it. Um, I need more time on that because I want it to work perfect. Um, so for the minute I've just gone back to the mechanism that I used on the other one which is okay, it's, it just means that you've, you've only got one hand free for then for forging, which you know is fine. Um, but I will get time and I will sort out this pedal but I want it to work smooth. So at the minute it's, it's working. Um, Right, so that's it, we're, we're finished. I've sorted the tools, um, the dies. So at the minute, I will be, I will be putting like a, a knob or something that's a bit easier to take these on and off. Uh, so they're attached to the plate. I'll do a complete new video on these because um, I've got two more sets of dies that I want to make. And one of them is ladder dies, which I, the way I've got my idea is something a little bit different to what I've seen. And I think the way the actual work will be slightly better than what I've seen. So, um, so I will do a complete video on, on attaching the putting these together. Um, so at the minute, it just slots in, and uh, I'll just lock it with the with the socket. But they're nice and secure. So all I've got to do now is uh, is test it. We'll fire up the forge, and we'll get some metal in it.
So on the whole, I don't think that was too bad. Um, there's a few little things um, that I would change. Well, what, I mean, one thing there, that the dies being cold, they're just going to suck the heat out of the metal. So probably preheat the dies when you're using it and then keep them closed in between heats just to keep the heat into them. Um, I did notice I've got a little bit of a leak from that cylinder and I think it was because I'd butchered that too many times and welded it. So I'll, I'll just find a replacement screw for that. Um, this, the lever being here, isn't so good because the, the hot scale falls under your hand. So I will sort the foot pedal um, or change the lever to out here, but uh, so that's not so good. And maybe a deflector plate on the back just because there is a hose around there. So again, uh, hot scale falling onto that, but in the end, it, it, it's, you know, it saves a lot of hand hammering, which is why I built it. I'm starting to get dodgy hands and um, it just takes a bit of the sweat out of it. So I'm not getting any younger, um, but, and it's a fun build. It's been a fun project. So, so I hope you like it. It's uh, plenty more. So the, I think the next thing on the channel, I will do the tooling, um, but then it's on to the big forge. Um, my super forge, double ribbon burner, vortex forge, so which I think is something a bit special and I think it'll be worth watching, so I will video that one and get it up. So thanks for looking in anyway, and uh, hope you enjoyed it, and maybe you're inspired to build your own. Okay, cheers guys, bye.